Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. So in today's video, we're going to be shifting gears a little bit over the last several videos. We've been talking about the Daikin VRVS installation. We went through design considerations, the meat and potatoes of the install, the most important things to look out for and consider during the installation process, the do's and do nots, if you would. Um, now that the system's installed, and we talked about all that in the last several videos, so I'll put a card in the corner. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. They're packed full of information. And then come back to this video here, because today's video is going to kick off the second half of this series, where we focus on the commissioning portion of the Daikin VRVS. In today's video specifically, we're going to be talking about binary. One of the most important things that you need to understand with the VRV outdoor units is they communicate uh, through a process called binary. And in this video, I'm going to explain how that works and show you the layout so that when you get to your first system, it's a little bit more familiar and not so scary looking because at first it can definitely be intimidating until you've done it once or twice and you're comfortable and you understand how binary works. It's very simple. Once you understand the light bulb goes off and you're like, oh, okay, awesome. But at first it can definitely be a little uh, hesitant. So in today's video, we're going to be kicking off the commissioning portion of the series with binary. We'll talk about the outdoor unit board, the buttons, and how to understand all the LEDs. And then uh, the next several videos will be going through the commissioning process, power up, uh, communication, verification, some troubleshooting steps that you can follow if you're having an issue with communication. Uh, some very neat things and tidbits to take from this series. So you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. Now, of course, before we get started today, you guys, I need to give you that weekly episode disclaimer as part of this series. This is not a factory authorized training. This is not a training of any kind. I'm simply taking pieces of information, uh, things from my experience, uh, information from the uh, installation manuals, and sharing it with you guys to just help the process go a little smoother for you. A lot of you are coming to VRV for the first time. It's new to you guys. So I just wanted to share uh, all this information with you guys to help your installs go a little bit smoother. We talk in this series about the whys and the hows, but again, this is not a official training of any kind. So do not take anything I say as fact. Always read the installation manuals, RTFM, because all of the information we discuss in these videos can be found in the installation and operation manuals. So don't throw them away. All right, let's go ahead and let's jump in and let's talk about some binary. So when you're ready to power up a VRVS system and you power up the indoor units and then you power up the outdoor unit, which we're going to talk about here shortly uh, in the next video, the power up process, you're going to notice right away on the outdoor unit that there are a ton of LED lights. And unless you understand binary, you're not going to know what those lights mean when they turn on. So in today's video, I really wanted to just break down the binary sequence that Daikin uses so that when you see the lights on these outdoor boards, you understand what they mean. Now the fun, or I should say not necessarily a fun fact, but the cool thing about these lights is if you're ever working on an older commercial three phase VRV system, these lights work the same way on those systems as they do on the VRV-S systems. The newer VRV-4 generation, VRV-X, and then the upcoming new VRV Amirion series, which is uh, launching here at the beginning of 2022. I'll put a card in the corner for that if you haven't already seen my teaser video on the VRV Amirion series. But those newer systems use an LED readout screen, so it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on with the system. On these VRVS systems and on older VRV three phase products, we're still using the binary LEDs. So in this video, my goal for you guys is to just understand how to recognize the value of the light that is illuminated. So let's take a look at a outdoor board and just explain and walk through what each of these lights represent. So up here on screen on the whiteboard, 
I'm going to show you guys this board and you can see that each light is labeled right above each light. You will have a H1P through H8P. Now, the easy light that we're going to go ahead and make disappear right away is the H8P light. We don't really care about this light on VRVS products. When you first power up the equipment, H8P is going to blink. But once the system is totally initialized, think about it like a computer. The computer takes a moment to boot up. Your Xbox takes a moment to boot up. And once it's booted up, then you're ready to go. You're ready to use the device. So the VRVS system works the same way. That H8P light will blink when you power it up. But once the system is initialized, that light turns off and never comes back on. On commercial systems, just in case you happen to stumble across this video uh, looking for some help on binary, on commercial systems, that light represents which outdoor unit is the master on a twinned system, which one is the first sub module and which one is the second sub module. So just fun fact about that HP, that H8P light. But on VRVS for today's video, the H8P light we can completely ignore because we will never use it once the system is initialized. So that leaves us with H1 through H7P. Now, for, for, the, for the time being, when you look at these lights, you're going to read the value of these lights from right to left. You're probably confused and wondering, what, do you, what are you talking about, Dana? And that's okay. Basically, I want to start with H7P is what I'm saying. Anytime H7P is turned on, illuminated, the value of that light equals one. And it doesn't matter one what. One indoor unit, uh, error code one, it, it doesn't matter. It's just a value of one. We'll talk about what they all mean later. If the H6P light turns on, then that value of H6P is two. And every light to the left doubles in value. So H7P is 1, H6P is 2, H5P is 4, H4P is 8, H3P is 16, and H2P is 32. When you get all the way back to the left-hand side, H1P, it's actually 0. H1P has a value of 0 because we use it to indicate what mode or what menu option the unit is in. So if you picture the, the board as a screen and you need to go into different menus to change settings, to verify certain parameters are set in the system, you can go into multiple menus. Well, that H1P light tells you what menu you're in. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. So as a little quiz for you guys following along, H7P is 1, H6P is 2, write this down, H5P is 4, and every light to the left doubles in value all the way to H2P, which is 32, and then H1P is 0. So, for example, if you are going through the menus, and again, it doesn't matter what you're doing at the moment, all we care about is recognizing the value of the lights. If H6 and H7P are both turned on, what is that value? I'll give you a moment. It's a lot of math. H7P is worth how many? One. And H6P is worth how many? Two. So you add those values together. One plus two equals, hopefully you guys got three. Yeah, I'm really hoping you guys were able to do that. That's an easy one. So then what happens when H5P H6P and H7P are all turned on. You do the same thing. You add up all three of those lights values. H7P is one, H2, or H6P is two, so one plus two is three, and then H5P is four, so three plus four is seven. You're gonna do the same thing anytime the lights are on. Now they're not always gonna be on in consecutive order. Sometimes you might have H5P and H7P both on, which is a value of one plus four equals five, but H6P is not on. So the way that you can kind of get the hang of it is seven is one, six is two, six and seven is three, five equals four, five and seven equals five, five and six, four plus two equals six, and so on and so forth. So it's a good idea to practice 
turning different lights on just kind of on your own draw seven circles if you will and label them one through seven and then just put a put a dot or a check mark on random lights and then try to count what the value is but today i really just wanted to focus on the lights themselves it doesn't matter what they mean we're not doing anything right now with the meaning of the lights all we care about is the value of the lights so hypothetically for example when we're ready to verify the communication is correct between the indoors and the outdoors as you're going to learn in the next video one of the really cool things is the outdoor unit will automatically address all of the indoor units so if i installed let's say six indoor units on my vrvs system then when i go into the menu and i go to the value for indoor units on the board the lights displayed should equal six so that way when i'm verifying that the outdoor board sees all the indoors the lights that are illuminated represent six so if i had six units installed which lights should be on i'll give you guys another minute to kind of think about it start with h7p and work your way through the list so we know that h5p has a value of four h6p has a value of two four plus two equals six so you should have five and six turned on if you had six units installed so hopefully that makes sense you might have to watch this two times or three times because sometimes it takes practice but once you get it it usually sticks pretty well and guys will have different uh, strategies for counting the lights for example if five six and seven are all turned on I know just from experience that the next light on is going to be h4p which has a value of eight so if I was to do eight minus one equals seven sometimes that's easier than counting seven plus six plus five to get that value all the way up to seven one plus two plus four when you're in some of the larger numbers, for example, there's a setting, setting 37 that we will have to set in some cases, you're counting more lights. You've got to count all the way up to 32, and then you got to add five on top of that. So a lot of guys will just keep hitting the button until H3P is on. Uh, I'm sorry, H2P is on for 32. See, even I make mistakes. And then five from there. So we know that five is going to be four plus one which is five and seven so you should have two five and seven all turned on so there's different ways about it i can only recommend practicing practice makes perfect and you know even after doing it a bunch sometimes you'll make a mistake so just always make sure that you double check your count before you go on to the next step and you'll be fine so i was going to take some time and explain all of the buttons to you guys in this video as well but I really want to make sure that I focus on each point at a time with you guys, kind of how we did on the install series. We talked about piping and just piping and then wiring and just wiring. I really want to keep these videos consolidated to one particular topic. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop today here where we're at on just the lights, just counting the numbers and that's it. And then in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through the buttons. What you're going to find in this second half of the series is the next two or three videos are really going to be utilizing these lights in real world examples. So if today's video was a little bit confusing, watch it one more time, take some notes, practice. And in the next video, we'll talk about the buttons. And in that discussion, we're actually going to go through and use the lights, for example, as we are pressing these buttons. So more and more and more, you're still gonna get the exposure to these lights. And of course, because I just like to explain everything more than is necessary, I'm probably going to reiterate some of the things we talked about in this video, just as recaps, just to try to help uh, carry you guys along and get that information to you. So for today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call everything good for today. Uh, in the next video, we'll focus on the buttons. So you guys, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you're watching all these videos as part of this series and you've already gotten to this video, I think this is episode six or seven. I've kind of lost track, to be honest. It means you're interested in this content. Subscribe because it helps me out. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.